the same thing as far as um, you need um, the dressing change, the kit. And then you need a um, suture removal kit, which we'll provide for you guys at checkoffs. And we will also provide um, a biohazard bag. And this is for the catheter, okay, at the end. You, can, you dispose of the catheter in a biohazard bag, okay? So I usually kind of just set that down there. And then I should have my suture removal kit. Okay, so you have those two things. And then you're going to have your, your stale dressing, your mask, and your disposable gloves. Alright, let's see. Okay. Alright, so again, we start here. I make sure I have the order to remove the the central line and then I go and I, I gather all my stuff here so like I said it's just kind of listed in number one so all that stuff is in your kit with the exception of disposable gloves your disposable mask your sterile 4x4 your biohazard bag and your suture removal kit okay and alcohol pads all right so I've got my stuff, I'm gonna knock on a patient's room, I'm foaming as I come in, cleaning my hands. Hello, I'm Shelly, I'm your nurse today. I have an order to remove your central line. Can you tell me your name and your date of birth? Okay, do you have any allergies to betadine, iodine, or shellfish? No, okay. Um, so when I do the procedure, I'm gonna remove your pillow and lay you flat. I'm going to clean the the area here I'm going to remove the tape and then when I get ready to pull out the catheter I'm just going to have you hold your breath for a second and once it's out you can breathe and then I'm going to hold pressure for maybe five to ten minutes okay so I come back over here my site is all clean I'm going to put on my glove to remove the old dressing Okay, I've got my mask. All right, so I'm gonna use my alcohol pad to remove the dressing again. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm ready to lay my patient flat. All right, I'm looking at my patient. He is resting comfortably. Um, denies complaints of pain, he's no shortness of breath, anything like that. I'm looking at my site and the dressing is intact. Uh, the, everything, the clamps the, are all clamped here on each lumen. And I don't see any drainage or anything, so everything looks okay for me to go ahead and proceed. All right. So again, I then pull the tape toward the catheter. Again, if you guys need to see, you can come up. You need to make sure you remove the tape that's securing the lines here as well, because when you go to remove it, you want to make sure that all this tape is removed, okay? Everything comes off. All right, so I'm going toward the site here. bundled up here. All right, I'm just ready to pull it off. So I'm going to get my sterile 4x4. Four four. I'm going to pull it from the corner. Okay, keep it clean. All right, and then I'm going to remove. Like I said, these are sutured down, so they're not going to be fumbling around, okay? So when you go to take this tape off, it's going to be easier. 
easier than this. <laughs> there we go. So that just stayed like that. Okay, I'm looking. Is there any green, red, or any kind of drainage there? And then I place it over. Okay, so now I'm ready to go ahead and open my sterile kit. I'm going to get rid of this. I'm going to wash my hands again because I'm getting ready to do a sterile procedure. So I want to make sure I'm all set up. So I need to open my suture removal kit. I can leave the stuff inside of it because I can touch inside. I just need to make sure it's open. So I'm going to set it over here to the side. I've got my bag and I'm going to set it over right here. Okay, so it's close by, so once I remove it, I can just go ahead and put it in the bag. All right, so I'm checking my bag, it's intact, it's not expired. Okay, I'm going to take my glove or my mask out first, go ahead and put it on. Take out my, my gloves. Okay, I'm gonna put these on. Make sure I do not need a biohazard, the, the little patch, because I'm removing everything. Okay, so I pause and I say, okay, this is open, so when I'm ready, I can just grab them out. So I'm ready to go ahead and move forward. set up my sterile field. The shiny part goes down. Okay, so I can touch in the middle here. You just have that one inch border. Okay, so I'm gonna set myself up again so in order so I don't forget anything. So first you're gonna start with the alcohol. Then I do the betadine. Then here, you want to what's important is that you want to measure before you cut the sutures okay so I put my measuring tape there and then I'll put these here to remind me that after I measure then I'm going to cut the sutures and then I will put my my dressing on and then there's a little two by two here and you use that for the initial pressure until it stops bleeding. And then you put the four by four in the dressing on, okay? All right. Okay, so I'm ready. I'm gonna move this so I can reach my... Okay, so I pull from the middle. And I'm gonna start with the alcohol again. Okay, start from the middle, scrub, 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 scrub. I'm looking at the site, how does the insertion site look, how does the skin look, okay, and you move out in circles. Like I said, this would be, this would be down. So if your hands are sterile, am I able to touch this? No. Yeah, you can, yep. So once you go around and you clean, you can touch, but just know, like, only the area where you're cleaning can you touch. Okay? Get rid of that. So I do that. Okay. And then scrub, 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 maybe five to ten seconds there. Look around. So you can touch anything within the area that you're cleaning, okay? You just cannot touch outside of that. Okay, so I'm going to let that dry. Once that's dry, I'm going to go ahead and use the Betadine. Okay, same thing, scrub. Okay, and then you go around. 
okay. If you miss, like you can obviously see the lines, if you miss a spot, you don't have to go back, get it with the next time that you go around, okay? your patient's head is turned to the side. I'm not sure if I mentioned that earlier. Okay, so then you're gonna let that dry. I'm gonna dry it because it doesn't dry on the mannequin. So we would just wait. I would be talking to my patient at the time, and ask them how they're doing. Okay, I'm almost done. I'm waiting for the solution to dry. I'm gonna measure it and then we'll remove it. Okay, so once that's dry, Again, I'm gonna take the measuring tape. It's centimeters. So a lot of times it's on the inside. Let's see where we went. Here we go. Keep it kind of bunched up in your hand so it's not flailing around. I fold at the zero. Okay. And I'm gonna measure from the insertion site, zero. So I'm gonna say it's about three and a half centimeters. I'm gonna remember that for documentation. All right, so I've measured, I've cleaned, and now I'm ready to cut the sutures. So the sutures are actually on the winged parts right here, okay? So there's two on each side, okay? So I'm going to get my scissors, and I'll also have my tweezers, okay? You're gonna cut, with this, with, cut the sutures and then you're gonna remove them and just put them down here, okay? So what you do is you come around and you're like, snip, and then you pull it out, put it down, go to the other side, snip. Once you cut the last suture, you need to put a hand on it because if you let go and your patient coughs, that thing could just fly out, okay? You need to, to hold on to it once you have it completely cut. Okay, so I've got the last one. I'm going to remove it, put it here. Okay, sir, I'm getting ready to remove the catheter. When I tell you on the count of three, I need you to hold your breath as I'm pulling it out. You might just feel a little bit of a tug. So this is where you have your two by two. And just kind of fold it up like that. You're gonna put it over the insertion site. Okay, so you put enough pressure to where um, you can still pull the line out, okay? But you wanna make sure you have a little bit of pressure there so that when you do pull it out, it, it doesn't bleed, okay? So I say, okay, I need to hold your breath on the count of three. One, two, three. Okay, you can breathe. So then you're gonna hold a pretty good amount of pressure there on the site. And then you wanna look at the tip of the catheter, okay? So what you're looking for is to make sure that it's intact, that there aren't any blood clots on it, okay? So you're looking at it. Um, so what I would have done is so you pull it out, you kind of look at it, assess it, and then you put it into the bag. Okay, so you're gonna hold for at least five minutes. At five minutes, what I do is I kind of pull it up and I peek if it's oozing a little bit, I might hold on to it for another minute or so. Somebody who has high blood pressure, it might take them 10 minutes or longer before it actually stays clotted. So you have to just wait it out, okay? I do it after another few minutes. I kind of look under, I'm like, okay, it's, it's stopped. So then this is where I get my four by four. Fold it up, put the four by four there. Patient who was Here, hold on one sec. Let me just finish this. Okay, so then I'm going to put my dressing. You know what? I did that backwards. You should do the 4x4 four four first because there's going to be more bleeding. If there is going to be bleeding, it's going to be right away. So it's going to be the 4x4, four four, and then you're going to put the 2x2 two two on last. And the reason for that is if it does ooze, 
could take a while for you to notice it. A four by four can saturate a pretty good amount of blood. If you have a two by two on there, if it does start oozing, you're gonna catch it a lot sooner with a two by two, okay? So uh, make sure, does it have um, in there written down to do the four by four than the two by two? Okay, all right, sorry about that. So you would have the two by two um, that you would put on. You would, and depending how your patient, if, you, if they're not tolerating laying flat, once I have this dressing on and secure and done, I can go ahead and just get uh, them sitting back up, okay? And then you can finish up from that point. You can also take off your mask once the site is covered, okay? And then, after you're done, the last thing that you're going to do after you initial date and time, the removal. I hope that you guys have better shape than this. on here. I would not leave that like that, but um, the mannequins. I think a lot of this stuff is old too, so it, the tape isn't as nice. Okay, so it's one date, and we'll say it's 10 o'clock. You will again put it on the bottom there, and then you have to measure the complete catheter at the very end, so I would um, take a pair of gloves, sorry, because I would not touch that with bare hands. So, so put some gloves back on, and then you measure the complete catheter. So you can grab it back out of here once, you know, at the end. So you're taking, so from the flexible part here, and you're going to measure it out. I would say it is 21.5. So right about there, okay? And then you're gonna document that as well. And then you would dispose of the biohazard bag in the appropriate place at the hospital, okay?